Welcome back to Harvard Stadium, a couple of moments away from the opening kickoff between the Hoyas and the Crimson here this evening. Georgetown will be receiving the opening kick as we take a look at the Harvard sideline. A lot of talk and a lot have been written about the new uniforms for the Harvard Crimson, and you see one of the new looks, the all crimson from head to toe. Very nice look. The helmets have that matte finish and uh, very sleek down there on the new field as well. Yeah, field's held up great, Scott. You and I walked down there. Elements aren't so much a factor. Their wind, when the ball's beneath the top of the stadium, won't be affected, but it's a little bit slick. It's one of those games where the crowd isn't here as strong as it possibly would be under the lights, so you're firing yourself up. You see them right there banging heads. That's what you're looking to do tonight. It's going to come all from within. So Harvard 2-0 and to begin this season. The win last week against Brown, 53-27, and it also opened up with a... 31-point victory at Rhode Island back on the 19th of September. Georgetown last week, the victory against Columbia, 24-16. The week before, 31-10 loss against Dartmouth, but uh, the score maybe not indicative of how well they played in that game. Yeah, this is a Georgetown team that's going to present problems. We talked about it at the top. They are strong in the secondary, so Harvard passing attack could have a little bit of problems there. And their offense, we talked about Nolan Hill at the wideout. They have a good slot guy. In DeSecchio, he's leading the conference in receptions. It's going to be a battle, Scott. It's going to be a fun one to watch, too. Glad we can be here. Harvard 10-0 and under the lights. So, see if they can keep that streak going. Moments away from the opening kick. We'll come off the leg of Kenny Smart. And back deep for Georgetown. Have Isaac Ellsworth, and this kick comes down to him at the one-yard line and shoots it right up the hash marks, and a good return here for Ellsworth, brought down from behind, but not before he can get to the 34-yard line, so about a 32-yard return for Ellsworth. Yeah, starts with the blocking up front. You see a nice wedge there. Ellsworth, boom, right through the hole. Good speed. He's the backup running back, but you'll see him also on offense, a little scat back, short, quick runner. You'll see him in the passing game a lot. So Georgetown comes out for its first offensive session here. And the quarterback that we talked about in the open, Kyle Nolan, starts out in the shotgun. And he fakes the handoff, and his first pass is batted down. It intended there in the middle to Matt Buckman. Yeah, looking for his tight end on the slant route there. Good read option. You'll see Nolan do that a lot. He'll read the defense. Thought he had something, but the overshoot. A little bit jazzed up, throwing it in front of his wide receivers. He'll settle in. Second down and 10 play for Georgetown. Nolan looks to throw and completes it on the near side. A quick tackle by Sean Ahern as the pass was complete to Harry Glore, senior wide receiver from here in Boston. Played at Belmont High and Deerfield Academy. Hoyas like to play up-tempo. I saw them use a lot of the no huddle against Columbia. Have it started tonight as well. Gain of six on the play. Third down and four on this first possession for Georgetown. The running back is Joel Kimpella to the left of Nolan. Nolan, pump fakes, flushed out of the pocket. And now looking to run with it. And looked like he got right back to the line of scrimmage, but nothing else. So the Harvard defense stands up tall and a quick three and out for Georgetown. Yeah, pressure comes from the right side. Nolan does a good job feeling it, but flushed out, as you said, nowhere really to go with it. A four wide receiver set, but Harvard bringing the blitz. We saw them bring it all night against Brown, and it works so effectively so far tonight. Being tracked down by both Dan Moody and James Duberg. Andrew Fisher back. A big playmaker for the Crimson. Let's see if he can get something going early. Should be a returnable kick. And with the elements, you never know how he handles this one. Harry McCollum, the punter for Georgetown, in a low liner. One hop to Fisher, picks it up at the 30-yard line. And bounces off a tackle before taken down. Just shy of the 45-yard line. So about 15 yards on the return for Fisher, who... Over his career, averages 10 yards per return, which is third best in Harvard history. Yeah, he's their hype man. He's, he brings a lot of energy, great wide receiver, and he's dangerous in that kicking game. That's We saw the kickers are going to have to keep it low, so when you have to hit a line drive kick like that, your coverage doesn't have time to get down the field. Gives Fisher a nice job by him reading that, picking it up on the fly, and making positive gain. 
Saw the Harvard band covered up in the ponchos with the rain falling here. It has been all day long with the weather so far today. Scott Hush will turn around and hand it off to Paul Stanton Jr. on the first play of Harvard's possession. Gets it out to the 48-yard line. So that'll be a gain of four for Stanton, who last week ran for 88 yards at a touchdown. Harvard was running the pistol here. Now they'll offset Stanton to the left of Hush. But you saw right there, Leo Lockery in the middle for Georgetown. He's going to have to make a lot of plays like that to keep them in the game. Second and six, and the pass is complete to Fisher. Spins off a tackle, breaks another one, and then... Brought down in Georgetown territory at the 45-yard line, and that'll be a crimson first down. Just get a feeling this is the type of game Fisher loves. They get him out, isolated on the outside. Nice little short throw. Get Hush feeling his throws early. That's a high completion percentage and letting your playmakers do stuff in space. So a first down at the 44 of Georgetown. Hush with the play action rollout. And completes the pass for a minimal gain to Anthony Ferkser, who is pushed out of bounds by Phil Novacki, junior defensive end for the Hoyas. So it'll be second down and nine for Harvard. Yeah, and great design there, Scott, by the Hoya defense. Showing blitz at the line, but backing out of it. That allowed Novacki to drop back in coverage and make that tackle. Look at Anthony Ferkser, who made that catch as Hush in the pistol and second down and nine. Looking up the middle, now dumps it off for Stanton, who can't hold on to it. That'll be an incomplete pass. So Stanton had it in his hands, maybe felt some footsteps. Yeah, it's a matchup to watch. Matthew Satchel, 44 for the Hoyas, had Stanton Jr. in the coverage out of the flat. It's a matchup that the Crimson usually take advantage of. Not many people can stay with Stanton, but Satchel coming off Patriot League all-conference selection last year. He's one of the best in the business. Third down and nine for Harvard. The Crimson... So far on the year, converting 41% of the time on third down. Hush, a quick screen, and the pass is complete to Justice Shelton Mosley. He has space down the sideline. The first down and plenty more to the Georgetown 22-yard line, a gain of 19. Perfect execution by the Crimson. Nice blocking up front. You see spring right there by Brodicker, and you'll see why Justice Mosley was slamming his fist to the turf. Right there, gets tripped up by his own feet and allows the Hoya defender to get him. Otherwise, he would have taken that to the touchdown. Shelton Mosley, a freshman from Sacramento. His third catch of the season, first to 10 at the 22. And on the handoff, it's Noah Reimers, the reigning Ivy League Rookie of the Week. Gains a yard to the 21. Reimers from Leesburg, Virginia, had two touchdowns last week against Brown, 62 yards on the ground. Second and nine at the Georgetown 21. Opening drive of the game for Harvard. Georgetown went three and out to begin the game. Stanton is the running back. And Hush over the middle, completes it to Fisher, dodges a tackler. As he normally does, able to always work out of that first tackler and gets his way inside the 15-yard line, picking up about seven. So it'll be a third and short coming up for Harvard. Perfect delivery by Hush there, and you see why he loves throwing the guy like Fisher. Just get him the ball. He can make the first guy miss, pick up some positive yards, get you into a manageable down and distance. Fisher now 10 catches on the season, came into today 11th all-time in Harvard history. Now has 97 career receptions. And the game was good enough for a first down. And now some movement along the Harvard line will draw some flags. Number 48, five-yard penalty, first down. False start on Ben Broniker. Yeah, we'll talk about Bronk a lot. Not really in a negative light, though. He's a, a great player, and he just got caught there. George, uh, Georgetown showing blitz, got him to move, and now you know that goal line. It's a tough position for the Crimson to be in. They can pick up a first down without scoring, but they're going to have to work in a short, um, short area of the field. Hand off to Stanton, who gets upended just inside the 15-yard line. And that, when you have that short field, that allows that secondary to come up on the run blitz and nice 
uh, decision by the Hoya coaching staff to call that play and taking down Stanton pretty hard, actually. So we'll see what the Crimson now second and 12, Scott, pinned back. So a gain of three from Stanton. Second and 12 at the Georgetown 14-yard line. Fisher on the slot to the near side. Hush fakes the handoff, looking down into the end zone, up and almost making the catch. Anthony Ferkser. Excuse me, it was Ben Broniker. Yeah, we saw Hush complete this pass last time. Not afraid to throw into double coverage when he's going uh, when he's throwing to Bronk right there in the middle. But Hoyas had that pretty well covered, and good for them. This is a player you have to watch, a player that we could see playing on Sundays next year. Third down and 12 now from the 14, so they can gain a first down at the two-yard line. Hush looking to his right and misses Ferkser. So the... Ferkser was turning towards the sideline, and that pass was back towards the middle of the field. So Harvard will be forced into a field goal situation. Good stiffening of the defense by the Hoyas there, holding Harvard. But it really started with that offsides penalty to start that. You had first and 10. Your offense was moving well, and then you're backed up to first and 15. You have to change your play calling, and now Harvard having to settle for a field goal attempt. This will be the first field goal attempt of Harvard's season for sophomore Kenny Smart. The holder is backup quarterback Jimmy Meyer. Jamison McShay, the long snapper. Short 31-yard field goal right down the middle and through for Kenny Smart puts Harvard on the board. Three to nothing. So Harvard gets into the red zone, but the back here at Harvard Stadium, a three-nothing lead for the Crimson off of 11 play, 42-yard drive. They did stall. Inside the 15-yard line, a 31-yard field goal for Kenny Smart as he'll be kicking off back to Georgetown. Scott Sudikoff alongside Chris Bosharini. A Friday evening that's very cool. Some wind and some rain here in the Boston area as the kick comes down to Ellsworth at the 11-yard line. Had a good first return. Hurdles a tackler. Gets past the 40. And then brought down from behind at the 45-yard line. A nice return by Isaac Ellsworth as he was finally brought down from behind by Nick Borello. Two great returns for Ellsworth to start this one. You get a look at it from the back, see what he sees. That hole, nice blocking up front by the Hoyas, and then second level's all him getting through and by. Kind of a touchdown-saving tackle there by the Hoyas. But again, good field position, another short kickoff. The wind definitely playing havoc in the kicking game. 34 yards on the return for Ellsworth and good field position for Georgetown at the 45-yard line in their second possession. You want to go up-tempo here if you're the Hoyas. Start attacking, have a little bit of momentum, keep going with it. Kimpella takes the handoff and up to the 49-yard line, a gain of four for the senior running back. Uh, the year averaging 3.1 yards per carry. Yeah, he's eighth all-time rushing in school history, a guy that's going to have to provide at least a balance. Can't be all passing against this Harvard defense. To beat the blitz, you got to run the ball. Campello's going to have to provide that tonight for the Hoyas. Second and six for Georgetown. Sidearm, and the pass is complete to, that is Justin Hill, who is wearing number seven today. Had a, I guess, a jersey malfunction with his number five, and so now he's wearing number seven here today. That's his 19th catch of the year. And that's a first down. To the Harvard 43-yard line. Nolan to the sideline. Another catch for Justin Hill. Had an 80-yard touchdown reception last week against Columbia. Right at the beginning of the second half. Yeah, he's got the ability to beat the defenses. That's why you see Harvard playing off, slipping in the secondary too. But you have to respect his vertical game, so he's able to get those short underneath routes and got him again. Again, trying to that sideline hill and cannot complete the pass in the area was Jordan Becerra with the coverage. So now it is third down. Uh, the line to gain is the 33-yard line. Critical down here, most likely passing, so Harvard can dial up that blitz if they want to. Third down and four for the Hoyas.
Blitz coming, and the pass is complete to Compella, but he can't spin free. Take it down at the 35-yard line. It'll be a couple of yards shy of the first down, and we'll see what Georgetown elects to do. Probably think this is four-down territory. Yeah, I like the call here. They're keeping the offense on the field, at least for now. Nolan did a good job pre-snap, waiting as long as he can, trying to see if Harvard would show their blitz. They didn't, but here we go. A big, early, pivotal moment in the game here. Fourth down and two at the 35 for Georgetown. Two for six on fourth down on the season are the Hoyas. Nolan, option pitch to Kimpella, and he's brought right down by Matt Corin behind the line of scrimmage, and it'll be a turnover on downs. Yeah, you get a look at Corin. Has seen too many of those, Scott, to fall for that one. They spread him out with four wide, but running the option pitch to the short side, too, you're kind of taking away all your room to run laterally. So an interesting play call, but a big stop by the Crimson defense. Georgetown with some movement offensively, but... Stalling here, so Harvard will take over. Yeah, you don't want to waste that field position. I like the call about going for you. you got to keep up with this Harvard team. They're going to start letting up the scoreboard, so you want to stay with them. But maybe the play call could have been second guess, but I like the decision overall to go for it. Taking over at the 36-yard line are the Crimson. Hush, three-step three -step drop and to the far side, completes the pass to side to Smith. Enough for a first down, 11 yards on the first down pass. Yeah, nice run out there by Smith, the second. He broke off his route very quickly, fast feet. And then on the sideline, too, gets those feet going to stay inbounds. Only need one, but if you want to play the next level, you got to get two. So good habit to get into if you're Smith. So Scott Hush doing what he did last year against this Georgetown team. And Stanton on the handoff. Another big gain on first down right to the first down marker and might have the first down. You'll notice the Harvard Crimson on offense when they're running. They run that zone block made famous by the Denver Broncos back in the late 90s with Terrell Davis. But Stanton, he has the ability. He's so quick that he can wait for his block to pick up, find his zone, and, and cut back against the block to find the open holes like he did right there. Back-to-back -back first downs for Harvard into Georgetown territory. And now the officials have a quick meeting. Our head referee is Luke Richmond tonight. Crimson have won 16 consecutive games entering play today. 10-0, of course, last year in the Ivy League Championship. And they call this a second and a one play, and now they get the first down with the pass to Andrew Fisher. So Fisher already three catches today. Yeah, Fisher bringing his game early. Paid the price there, though. He gets sandwiched. See that block, though, by Stanton. Nice pickup by our camera. That allowed Hush to have the time to deliver the ball to Fisher. Hush last year against Georgetown was 20 of 25 for 293 yards and off to a very similar pace here tonight against the Hoyas. From the 36-yard line. Complete to Anthony Ferkser with space in front of him. Lowers his shoulder as he's brought down by Etienne Scott, who was a second-team All-Patriot League performer last year at the quarterback position, and Ferkser with his second catch of the day. Yeah, Ferkser's really emerging out of the halfback. You see the good blocking again, picking up the blitz. He came onto campus thinking he might play basketball and has decided to go with football, but he's emerging sort of in that H-back role, able to catch passes out of the flat. First and 10 up the middle, Stanton. Inside the 15-yard line to about the 14, three yards for the senior running back from Kenner, Louisiana. Last year ran for 990 yards. His sophomore season ran for 938. And this is where the Crimson stalled last drive. Let's see what they do here. Going to back to the pistol, and Reimer's in now. Second and seven. Reimers on the handoff and uses the blocking well, then loses the football at the five-yard line and the loose ball. It looked like Georgetown was able to fall on it first. And they're saying it is still Harvard football. Take a better look at it here. 
Very fortunate for the Crimson, Scott. I agree with you. It looked exactly like Georgetown had it. Hat on the helmet causes the fumble. Unfortunately, in that dog pile, though, Georgetown it, uh, loses control, quite frankly. Crimson retained possession. It was Harrison Carter that laid the hit that knocked the ball loose, but Harvard recovers first and goal. Up the middle, Stanton, touchdown, Harvard. 30th rushing touchdown of Paul Stanton Jr.'s career and the 32nd total touchdown for Stanton, which is second all-time in Harvard history, and it's now 9-0 Crimson. Winning the battle up front are the Crimson, following the lead black right through there. That's Fabiano on the pulls, number 77, and Stanton can walk in. He could have kept going, quite frankly. Nice hole, nice job winning the point of attack at the line of scrimmage by the Crimson offensive line. Third touchdown of the season for Stanton in as many games. The point after from Kenny Smart is through the uprights, and Harvard now has a 10-0 lead in the latter stages of this first quarter. 24th ranked Crimson looking for a 3-0 start to the season. Ten nothing Harvard after this four-yard touchdown run by Paul Stanton Jr., the 32nd total touchdown of his career and his 30th rushing touchdown, which puts him alone in second place all-time in Harvard history in both categories. Although for the total touchdown category, he has a long way to go. <laughs> uh, Clifton Dawson with 66 total touchdowns in his Harvard career. Kickoff here from Kenny Smart. Down to Ellsworth, who has had two good returns thus far. And he's brought down shy of the 25-yard line, so Harvard able to stop Ellsworth a bit on that return. And Georgetown will have the ball for the third time today. Yeah, he had to figure special teams coach Ryan Crawford was giving a little bit of an earful to his guys on this sideline, making some adjustments to that special teams coverage because Ellsworth had set them up in pretty good position both times. That time, much better job by Harvard getting through the blocks, getting down the field, and making the solid tackle. Seven plays, 64-yard drive for that touchdown for Harvard. First and 10, Georgetown at the 25. Nolan will fake the handoff. The blitz coming, gets rid of it. And it was over the outstretched hands. It was intended for Justin Hill, and in the area defensively was Luke Hutton. Yeah, Chris Evans off the edge on the cornerback blitz really forced Nolan into getting rid of that early. Lucky for him, the ball sailed high because Harvard also had the coverage. Nolan's got to be careful. Got to limit your turnovers tonight when you're playing a team this good. Second down and 10. Five wide receivers for the Hoyas. Nolan quickly turns and fires, completes it. And then gang tackle out to the 35-yard line. So a gain of 10 for Justin Hill, already his third catch of the day. Yeah, and really nice job by Hill turning his body. You'll get a look at the end there. He makes the catch. Nice delivery by Nolan. Looks at the whole way. But Hill able to fall forward as he's going down there. See him keep the legs moving, fall forward. That allows him to pick up the first down. So a good 10-yard gain for that first down. Georgetown's been able to move the ball thus far. Handoff goes to Kimpella. Gets by one tackler down the sideline with some space. Hill with the block out in front. And then from behind, able to wrangle Kimpella is Eric Meads. But a big gain for Joel Kimpella. And Georgetown is now deep into Harvard territory all the way to the 24-yard line. Yeah, another read option this time. Nolan hands it off. Compella does the rest, beats the coverage to the outside, and one block away from taking that to the house. Nice job by Hill trying to get Compella all the way down, but they're in business either way. Forty-yard gain for Compella on the run. Goes after it again. A hand up near the face mask there. Don't see a flag as the tackle made. Behind the line of scrimmage all the way to the 31. That'll be a loss of four yards. Try to stay with the hot hand. Try the other way. That time the Harvard defense was ready for it. Ate it up. And that's Doug Webb, who's made a good impression in practice. Stiff arm there, but Webb comes in, you see, and able to bring down Compella. But nice job by Webb in the middle there. And Duberg, they've been doing, and Dan Moody, excuse me, in the defensive end. They clogged up that lane. Compella had nowhere to go. 
Second and 14. Nolan rolling to the right. Looking that way. And off the hands of the intended target. Justin Hill again, the, the target of Kyle Nolan's affection with the passes. Yeah, and you or see. Actually, like that, that was 27, looks like, not 7. You got it, Scott. Yeah, it was DeSico in the slot who made a nice route. Hill drew the double coverage. A safety one on one was left with DeSico. Just found the little soft belly of the zone, but Nolan delivered it a little too high. First time DeSico has been targeted today. One of the best receivers in Georgetown history. Third down and 14. See what Harvard does defensively. Four man rush. Nolan that flushed out of the pocket. Dumps it down, and Kimpella drops it. It'll be fourth down. Well, this would be a 46-yard field goal attempt for Henry Darmstadter, who made a 46-yarder last week against Columbia. And we watched in warm-ups today, Scott, shooting into the open bowl of this end zone, unable to reach from exactly this portion, falling short multiple tries. So a good decision to go for it. Another fourth down opportunity here. Second time Georgetown has gone for it on fourth down in Harvard territory. Need to get it to the 15-yard line. Pressure coming up the middle. And a lot of room to gain here for DeSico, and he won't get anything. Forward progress will bring it up a little bit, a few yards, and a late flag thrown. I don't. It could be roughing. It could, this could go against the Crimson. I don't really know what else it would be. Maybe a face flag mess, some type of personal foul. Looks like this might be against Harvard, as you were saying, in Georgetown. Could get a first down out of it. Automatic. I believe that was illegal hands to the face. Can't. Our referees might going in and out a bit. Your penalty. Replay. Fourth down. A legal block in the back on Harvard on defense. Interesting. You don't see that call. And apparently the runoff of the 15-yard Scott isn't enough for a first down. So it's still going to be fourth in inches. But now if you're Georgetown, you take those 15 yards and go for the field goal instead. It would make it a 31-yarder instead. Uh, it appears left the offensive on. I would go for the seven. You can't get this close in nine, and there's going to be a timeout, I think, or the referees are signaling yeah, a timeout here for a measurement. Not really sure where the ball is supposed to be, it looks like. Yeah, that makes sense. I hadn't heard of a 15-yard block in the back <laughs> against the defense, to be quite honest. But uh, got to get their sorts out and – Got a lot of timeouts on the f on the uh, field now. Still don't know what they called. Harvard called the timeout. We at least know that to talk about it. So either way, Scott, I guess it's going to set up a fourth and manageable. Here comes one more announcement. Timeout. Harvard, first charge timeout of the half. So Harvard will call a timeout here, and then we'll sort things out on the other side. 3-11 left to play in the first quarter. 24th ranked Harvard leading Georgetown at 10 to nothing here at Harvard Stadium. So after the penalty here on this play, it'll be fourth down and one for Georgetown at the 16 and they'll go for a 33 yard field goal from Henry Darmstadter. Looking to get on the board are the Hoyas. And the kick is wide and no good. And it'll stay 10-0 Harvard. So it was a 10-yard illegal use of hands penalty, which got them within one yard of the first down. So Georgetown electing to go for the field goal instead of going for it. And can't really fault them for that decision. Yeah, you do want to get points. You know, you're only down 10. That would have made it a one-score game, but have to figure this Crimson offense has really showed no signs of slowing down. Put up 57 last week. You got to kind of go touchdown for touchdown with them. So it's up to the defense here after that missed field goal. 
coming up empty. Defense really has got to pick up their offense right now. Harvard averaging 47 points a game through the first two games. 41 against Rhode Island, 53 against Brown. First to 10, Harvard at the 20-yard line. Touchdown on the last drive. Hand off to Stanton. He'll gain about three yards, brought down by three different Hoyas. One of them being Leo Lockery. Junior who had 12 tackles a couple of weeks ago against Dartmouth. Also had an interception last week in the game against Columbia. Gain of three. Second and seven for Harvard. Hush being chased, gets away, and now space to run. Across the 30, first down, and angles out of bounds at the 32-yard line. A 12-yard rush for Stanton, make that, or for Hush, make that nine yards for the first down. Lockery with the all-out blitz up the middle. Hush able to escape it, and then he's off to the races, able to pick up that first down. Nice escapability by Hush. You need that every now and then when Georgetown brings the blitz. First it's set at the 32, and a flag before the snap. Looks like a false start on Harvard. Yeah, Adam Redman knew it, the center. He uh, moved the ball a little bit there. He was the first one out of the huddle. Anytime those – sorry about that, Scott. Anytime those uh, linemen are the first to leave the pile, they know it's against them. So Harvard with their second offside, as you said, sort of shooting themselves in the foot a little bit tonight, but still with the 10 points, moving the ball pretty well on offense. So back to the 27 it goes, first and 15, the final two minutes of the first quarter. Hush looking deep and way out in front of side two, Smith. Coverage by Etienne Scott. It'll be second and 15. Hush threw for three touchdowns last week against Brown, 151 yards. Senior from Sugar Hill, Georgia, 8-0. As the starting quarterback for Harvard, stepping into the role last year, replacing Connor Hempel. Second down, 15. Hush tucked it for a moment and then lops it out of play. In the area was Joseph Foster. Looks like the Georgetown sideline looking for a And they're looking for a flag, and the referee clarifying that Foster was in the area, so no intentional grounding, third and 15. Yeah, Hush got caught with a little happy feet there. Nice disguise by the Hoyas. Both teams are switching their calls at the line. Hush expected blitz. It never came, so he kind of tucked the ball before and just had to force the throw. Just a three-man rush on this play. Dumped out to Stanton. A flag comes down. Looks like it'll be against Harvard. Looks like Andrew Fisher had a handle of a jersey as the ball came out, but after the play was dead. And it will be a holding against Harvard. Looked like Fisher had tackled a Georgetown player. Holding. Offense. Number one. That penalty is declined. Fourth down. So obviously Georgetown will decline that penalty. It will force Harvard to punt for the first time today. So a good defensive series for the Hoyas. Very good defensive series. You see they got it well defended there. And the hold right from behind you see against Fisher. The block in the back had a hole full of the jersey. Spun him. That's going to get the call every time. And now again, Hoya return game has been pretty good tonight. See if they can generate some offense off this punt. The punt from Zach Schmid takes DeSico all the way back inside the 15-yard line. So nowhere to go for Jake DeSico off the punt by Zach Schmid. So Georgetown will be backed up for this offensive series. They have been able to move it into Harvard territory each of the last two possessions. A turnover on downs the first time, and then a missed field goal on the second try. Yeah, something we expected, Scott. They certainly can move the ball. They spread them out here with a five wide. Sometimes they'll run out of this. Watch to see if Campella comes in motion.
but they can certainly move the ball. It's can they score? Nolan stepping up in the pocket and completes the pass to Matt Buckman. To the 36 yard line, a gain of 22 on first down. And Hoyles will go no huddle. <laughs> you can look at Nolan. I think he couldn't believe. It's almost, I want to get rid of it as quick as I can. Look at how open Buckman is. So he had to fire that one. But one of those where you're like, oh, I can't believe it's so open. Hike it, hike it. And good delivery there and a nice gain on first down. Nolan quickly slings it and hits the ground first. Incomplete. Intended for number 87, Harry Glore. Brings up second down and 10, which is 47 seconds remaining in this first quarter. Yeah, Scott, those bubble screens are not as effective against other teams, or they are effective against other teams, not as effective against the Crimson because their linebacking core are so quick, sideline to sideline. Corin, Meads, and Lindsay, and that allows the secondary to step up too. So Georgetown may have to do some ver more vertical routes to free that bubble screen game up. Nolan. To the near side and knocked away from behind by Ahern. Great play defensively, knocking it away from Justin Hill. Sean Ahern, an all Ivy League first teamer last year. Because of plays just like this one, you'll see again. Ahern had a couple sacks, was doing a lot of blitzing against Brown right there. Up, up on the coverage, jumping the route on Hill. And that's something not easy to do. Good third, hands. Third down and 10 for Georgetown. Nolan will dump it off. Kimpella in the tackle by the legs from Jacob Lindsay in the Georgetown drive after a good first play. Cannot get anything else. And have to punt here on fourth and 10 from the 36. And that's exactly what I'm talking about, Scat. You had a one on one battle. You have the running back in the flat, Kimpella, one on one against Lindsay. There's no help anywhere else. But those Harvard linebackers, Jacob Lindsay, Meads, and Corin, as we said, Lindsay right there demonstrating they can make those open field tackles. And that just thwarts that type of passing game. Harry McCollum on to punt for Georgetown. His first punt was a 30 40 yarder. The clock will run out, though, here in the first quarter. So after one quarter of play at Harvard I'm Stadium, Georgetown trailing Harvard at 10 to nothing. McCollum back to punt for Georgetown as we begin the second quarter. 10 nothing Harvard. Andrew Fisher standing at his own 25-yard line looking to return it. Less wind going this way, fortunately for the Hoyas, so that flip over may have helped. And the punter will get partially blocked. Bounces there at the 50-yard line and takes a bit of a Georgetown roll to the 31. But definitely a partial block of the punt, and that's another blocked kick for this Harvard team. They've had a block punt in now each of the first three games of the season. Just right off the edge, no one picks him up, not knowing your man for the Hoyas. That you said it's got make it three in a row, three games, three block kicks. I noticed they put out a block how to block a kick video on the GoCrimson.com website. Perhaps uh, they're share, they're sharing their uh, tales with teams because they are so good at that play. Harvard takes over at the 31 yard line, already leading 10 to nothing. And on the end around Fisher. Not a lot of room, but able to gain some yardage to the 34-yard line. Three yards for Fisher on the end around. Yeah, the jet sweep you mentioned. Blocking's there, but there's just not enough room. Good job by the Hoyas to push back and force him out to the sideline. Sometimes I guess a fast player like Fisher, sideline can act as that extra defender, and that's what they did there. Second down and a seven for Harvard. And wide open is side to Smith. Cuts it back up the middle for a first down near midfield. 13 yards for side to Smith. The ninth first down of the game already for Harvard after eight in the first quarter. Harvard outgained Georgetown in the first quarter, 127 to 95. So again, the Hoyas 
Been able to move the football, but haven't converted. Hush, deep down the middle, looking for Fisher, and it's two steps in front of him. He had him, though, Scott Fisher. Nice r nice route right there. Got by his man, but fortunately a little bit too much pep on that, unable to haul it in. Fisher with three catches already on the day. Hush is now 9 for 15, throwing the football. Second and 10 from the 46-yard line. Stanton behind Hush in the pistol. Stanton takes the handoff, sprints through a hole into Georgetown territory and to the 38-yard line. 16 yards for Stanton. We just winning big the hole line. opening up. Yeah, sorry, Scott. Letting the line of scrimmage right there. All day they've been doing it. That's what the Crimson are so good at. It's Mark Goldman, 76, I believe, with the seal at right tackle. Excuse me, make that Max Rich with the seal. It It's a thing to watch when Harvard gets going on their ground game. They create such space and then get into the runners a second level before they're even touched. Now from the Georgetown 37-yard line, faking the end around, Hush will pass it and just knocked away. Jelani Williamson knocking it away from Joseph Foster. So Williamson, that cornerback on the opposite side of Etienne Scott, makes the play for the Hoyas. Yeah, you see that pancake block at the bottom of your screen there by Fabiano. That allowed Hush to deliver it. Joseph Foster, young receiver, he needs to come back towards that ball. The fact he waited for it allowed Williamson to get a hand on it and break it up. Harvard with this 10-0 lead here at home. 25-2 here at Harvard Stadium since 2010. Stanton, a big hole, sprinting for the end zone. Touchdown, Harvard. Touchdown number 32 of his rushing career for Harvard. I think I gave him an extra one. It's actually 31 and 33 for his career, but either way, it's 16 nothing Harvard on that quick burst for another score. Well, if the holes keep opening up like that, he might get that extra one you have already given him. He is coming to play tonight, hitting those holes. The offensive line, he would t tip his head just as much as we would up here. They create the space, and he just uses that speed in the second level. Stanton averaging 10 yards per carry thus far here tonight. 81 yards and two scores. The Kenny Smart point after is right through the uprights. And Harvard now leads 17 to nothing. So the Crimson with the lead, a 37-yard touchdown run by Paul Stanton. 17-0 Crimson. Thirty-seven yard run and score by Paul Stanton Jr. Has capped a six play sixty-nine yard drive for Harvard. And the Crimson now lead Georgetown seventeen to nothing. Along with Chris Basharini, I'm Scott Sudikoff. Glad you were with us on ESPN three and the Ivy League Digital Network as Kenny Smart kickoff is short, taken at the twenty yard line. But not a Big return. Valley's the return man on this one for the Hoyas. And the ball will be spotted right around the 25-yard line for the Hoyas. First down and 10. In much need of some offense. Georgetown beat Columbia last week 24-16. They were trailing 10-3 late in the first half before two touchdowns in 15 seconds gave the Hoyas the lead. And then they held on for the victory. Nolan on the first down, fakes the handoff to Capella, and then the pass goes in and out of the hands of the receiver there, Jake DeSico, who and has not caught a pass yet today and leads the team with 26 coming into action. Well, that was definitely a footsteps play. Not bad for DeSico, honestly, to drop that. He had three Crimson defenders bearing down on him. That's how Harvard tackles. A lot of gang tackling. They all go after the ball, never rely on one player to make a tackle. Good team tackling by the Crimson.
Compella on the handoff and absolutely no room up the middle. Gets about a yard, maybe a yard and a half. It'll be third down and long for Georgetown and the Hoyas. Cannot afford a three and out here with the way the game has been going. And Georgetown is 0 for 4 on third down thus far tonight. Yeah, they got Ellsworth in there now to provide a little bit of speed, maybe pass catching out of the backfield. But they got to go vertical the hill. They had him going early, but that's what they got to keep going at now. Nine yards to gain and quick dump off to Ellsworth. Has one man to beat, and he can't beat him. Chase Gilroy with the tackle, but a flag on the play. Yeah, clear face mask uh, against Ellsworth, though Georgetown will get a fresh set of downs. First and a foul, face mask on the defense. Number 49, 15 yards will be added to the end of the run. First down. So Georgetown will get a fresh set of downs. And that's too bad for the Crimson defense. They had him stopped for three and out, and now you got to go back to work on defense. And Georgetown, new life, need points on this drive. All the way out to the 48-yard line. Nolan off his back foot, completes the pass, but again, nowhere to go. Joel Campella made the catch. Matt Korn right there, right on his jersey as he makes the catch. And I like the new look having Ellsworth in there, but that's a ball Nolan just can't throw. He's got to throw that at the feet of his receiver or throw it away. Ellsworth being tackled as soon as he's catching the ball. That's going to be nothing good will ever come out of that play. A loss of three yards, second and 13. Nolan to pass, pressure from behind, ball knocked away. It's a fumble and scooped up by Matt Corrin who is trying to streak towards the end zone, gets taken down at the 25-yard line. Harvard forces the fumble and the recovery, and now they're cooking again on offense. On the outside, you'll see it come into your screen late. Nolan turns his head. There's big 95 coming with the arms. Miles McCollum scoops it, and Corin able to pick it up and get off to the races. Harvard does a good job of that, Scott, picking up the ball, not just falling on it. They're able to pick it up and get some yards. So Matt Corn with the fumble recovery. Remember, he had a pick six last year, last year against Columbia of 34 yards. Was hoping to bring that to the end zone. First and 10 at the 25-yard line for Harvard. Trying now to pour it on against the Hoyas, and we're still early in the second quarter. Push. And it's tipped up in the air and still caught. Broniker still caught the football after it was tipped up in the air. And now they're inside the five-yard line. Everything coming up crimson. That Georgetown had the right coverage, had their hands on the ball, still somehow finds Harvard, and they're knocking on the doorstep of another six points. See who got their hands on it. Garrett Powers, strong safety, got his hands on it, but couldn't intercept it or knock it down. First and goal. Noah Reimers in the backfield. Reimers takes the handoff, and the freshman dives towards the end zone. And he's in for his third touchdown in the last two weeks. The freshman now gives Harvard a 23-0 lead. Get a nice look at his moves right here. Lowry is going to bust right through number eight right there. Boom, see ya, slips on the turf. Reimers able to scoot by him, and then nice job keeping his footwork and knees off the ground, getting the ball over the plane, breaking that goal line. So the third rushing touchdown of the game overall for Harvard. This is a Harvard team that seemingly always has a running touchdown. 27 consecutive games with a rushing touchdown for Harvard. And they have three here tonight. And now lead 24-0, turning a fumble into seven more points. All crimson on this Friday night in Boston. Noah Reimers, the Ivy League Rookie of the Week for two touchdowns last week against Brown, and he drives this one in from four yards out. And now has his Harvard team on top of Georgetown, 24 to nothing, with still 10.51 to play in the second quarter. So 
So Kenny Smart kicking off back to the Hoyas, taken by Isaac Ellsworth, who's had a good job on returns today and gets near the 40-yard line, brought out of bounds just shy by Borello. So another good return by Isaac Ellsworth. Yeah, you see his speed to the outside, Scott. And this marks, you know, out of all the offensive possessions for the Hoyas, they've had a fair amount near the 50, just over the 50, or perhaps just on the other side. But they've had good field position tonight. They just have not been able to capitalize moving the ball in this Crimson D. Their passing game is so predicated on short underneath routes, and the Harvard linebackers have been eating them up all night. Georgetown has 94 yards on offense thus far. They've been in Harvard territory twice. The handoff to Joel Kimpella in short gain, if any, for Kimpella. You see who wears number 35 for the Hoyas. And he wears number 35 as the Joe Ekabachi Memorial jersey. You'll get more into that in just a moment. Nolan. Looking towards the near side and completes the pass to DeSico, who is driven out of bounds right at the first down marker. Looks like he'll be one yard shy as the ball is spotted at the 48-yard line. Nice route by DeSico. You talked about leads the team in receptions. One of the more prolific pass catchers in the history of Hoya football. Fifth all-time, now with 110 catches in his career. Senior from Kingston, New York. Third down and one. Blitz is coming and Nolan just throws it away. And he just barely got it back to the line of scrimmage. Nobody in the area. And the official's probably going to discuss an intentional grounding here. Well, let's see if he gets outside the tackles. Tough to tell right there. And my naked eye did not look like he did. So... The official's still conferring. For intentional grounding, the quarterback was outside the pocket, and the ball got to the line of scrimmage. You might hear the Harvard sideline not happy <laughs> with that explanation. Jacob uh. Lindsay had the pressure there, and now Georgetown will have to punt yet again. Interesting, though. They were going for it earlier. You have a small down in distance. You're already down 24 points at the 50-yard line. You figure you might as well go for it again. A little early to be licking your wounds if you're the Hoyas. McCollum had his last punt partially blocked. You see they got a max protect on now. Three Hoyas back. Got to know your assignments on the outside. Easier to max protect two when you're doing more of a pooch punt, of course. But that Harvard ball hawking special teams. Already three blocks on the season. One in each game thus far. As Andrew Fisher stands back at the 14-yard line. Catches at the 10. Fisher with space towards the 40. And then wrangled down to the 47-yard line. 37-yard return for Andrew Fisher, who continues to add to that third-best Harvard return average for punt returns. He's also one of the best kick returners in Harvard history. Yeah, Scott, it's pick your poison against this Crimson special teams unit. Uh, special teams coordinator Ryan Crawford certainly has him going on all cylinders. You do a max protect. That doesn't leave as many gunners going down the field. That gives Fisher the open room, and he turns it into a big gain. So there's really no way to go against this unit. So all the way to the 46-yard line, it'll be spotted. First and 10 for Harvard. Already on top, 24 nothing. Stanton. Gets across midfield to the 49-yard line of Georgetown. A gain of five for Stanton, who's already nearing 100 yards, has 86 on the day thus far. Second down play from the 49-yard line. Smith. The catch spinning towards the sideline, brought down by two Hoyas. The ball comes out, but again, play whistle dead, and Jelani Williamson not happy with that call. And we'll see if we get a look, better look on the replay. It was really tough, 50-50 if his knee was down before that ball came out. It definitely was coming. Let's see if they slow it down there. 
Yeah, really tough to tell, Scott. I don't know, though. He looked like he might have been held up by the defender. And Williamson was just ripping it out of the hands. It was a first down. Another carry for Stanton gets stacked up at the line of scrimmage. Picks up a yard. Leo Lockery, the tackle. For Georgetown, junior from Glenshaw, Pennsylvania. Mentioned his day against Dartmouth, had 12 tackles. A couple of weeks ago for the Hoyas defensively. Second down and nine. Four-man rush for the Hoyas as Hush stands in the pocket. Now steps up, lofts it towards the end zone, and a flag not coming out there for the contact as Anthony Ferkser got tripped up, but looked like incidental, and then a flop there from David Akiri. Looked like trying to draw a flag on Ferkser. Yeah, kind of unsportsmanlike there by Akiri. He's a big hitter for them. Sort of a tough player, but that's not anything we need to see on the field where you're trying to flop like that. Incidental contact. They certainly both tripped going for the so ball. that call went in definitely in Georgetown's favor. because they Exactly, called yeah. The, yep. I can live without that call, but the flopping is tough, tough to watch. So it's a third down and nine now from the 40-yard line. Hush over the middle. Completes the pass and trying to reach for the first down is Ferkser. He's going to be one yard shy, a gain of eight. For Anthony Ferkser, his third catch of the evening in Harvard. Looks like they'll keep the offense out there. They will from the 32-yard line. Fourth down and one. A lot of movement along the line now as Georgetown drawn off. And now some extra pushing and shoving. And, and I have to be careful here. This is what you let that flop go. Yeah, this is kind of what ensues. Down at the bottom of the pile there. Saw for Harvard getting sandwiched it was Adam Redmond. Yeah, the referees needed to throw the flag on that flop. You got to sort of set the tone. We're not going to tolerate these sort of antics on the field. And now they have thrown one flag. And we'll see. I call the fumble on the field up here, Scott. No, uh, Harvard, I believe, calling a timeout. I really am perplexed at what's going on. I thought I heard a whistle for a false start, and now they've given the ball to Georgetown. Appears a fumble. Let's see if the ref will go to the stadium mic and give us an explanation. But the teams have certainly changed sides. Harvard now on defense. The only thing I can think of, Scott, so the yeah. Play, the play <laughs> happened. There was no penalty, and there was a fumble, it looks like. <laughs> so hey, Friday night. Ball. Friday night lights. Let's go. Nolan trying to get away from the pressure. And a pass incomplete. Nolan's slow to get up. You see at the bottom of your screen there. Kind of took an awkward push at the end. And, and he's not going to be able to make down. it. Yeah. So Kyle Nolan down on the turf, hurt for Georgetown as the training staff come from the opposite side to check on him for the Hoyas. Appeared to be right at the end. He might have got his foot stuck when he got pushed. He looked to be sort of pointing at his legs. That's what the trainers are working on now. But, you know, you see the Crimson huddled up as well, Scott. 24-0. The hits just keep on coming. Well, Nolan will have to come out for a play. Backup quarterback is junior Tim Barnes, who has thrown just three passes so far this year and threw three last year and then played in one game two years ago. As Nolan has had a stranglehold on the starting job for Georgetown for the last two seasons. Yeah, so you'd expect probably a handoff, at very least a very safe throw, so you can, if Nolan's able to come back out. Uh, but for Barnes, that's why you work. You know, college athlete, he's certainly done a lot on the scout team. He's 
been out there practicing hard and now a chance maybe for him to shy, shine and inject some life. We saw Brown last year bring in their reserve and they were able to put some points on the board. So maybe this will be a fortuitous moment for the Hoyas. Second and 10 play and Barnes will throw. Now he'll tuck it looking to run. Brought down at the 35 yard line. It'll be a gain of two and bring up third down and eight. Yeah, no sign of Nolan. So sometimes, Scott, this you game plan all week for one type of player, and then you get someone you're not expecting If in the uh, case of the Crimson. So maybe Barnes can sneak attack them here and put some points and get positive drive going. Third and long, though, for Georgetown, and the only third down conversion they have thus far today was off a penalty. The snap was high. Barnes looking left. Now he'll run again. Barnes will pick up a first down to the 45-yard line. Good 10-yard run by Tim Barnes, so back-to-back -back runs for Barnes. Yeah, good energy, nice decision. He scouts, you see him roll out of the pocket, get away from the pressure, look around, doesn't see his receiver. He able to tuck it and run it, get some good blocking as well, and you know, little energy, giving some high fives to the guys back in the huddle, let's go. So Georgetown now, its first true third down conversion. At the 45-yard line, play action, quick strike looking. And that pass is incomplete, in and out of the hands of the intended receiver, Troy Bullock, a fullback for the Hoyas. It'll be second and 10. Look at Matt Corrin, captain of this Harvard team. Under Late. six and a half to play in the first half here. Nolan. And on the slant, in and out of the hands of Justin Hill this time. So Barnes, after two nice runs, a couple of passes that are definitely catchable, but his receivers can't reel him in. And Nolan checks back in, but Barnes maybe later on the bus tonight. Give his guys a little grief. Hey, man, I finally get some action. You guys drop both my balls I throw. Good work by him, though. He kept the drive going. Now no one has a chance to maybe take this one step further and convert on third. Third down and 10 for the Hoyas with Nolan back in at quarterback. Five wide receivers. Four-man rush from Harvard. And they had Langston Ward getting through. And then Nolan has to just throw it in the dirt in front of Harry Glore. Yeah, he's not going to get a sack, but definitely credit Langston Ward there, causing the early throw. He forced out of the Nolan out of the pocket. No receivers were open, and that's just great disruption with a four-man rush. So back to punts is Harry McCollum for Georgetown. And waiting at the 15-yard line is Andrew Fisher. On the Crimson return. Not a very good punt. It lands at the 32-yard line and takes a Harvard roll, about a yard, though. It picked up around the 33. So that'll only be about a 22-23 yard punt for Harry McCollum. 6.09 left to play in the second quarter. Harvard leading... 24 to nothing, three touchdown runs, two by Paul Stanton and the other by Noah Reimers, and as well as a field goal from Kenny Smart. Georgetown had the ball in Harvard territory twice in the first quarter, but turned it over on downs once and then missed a field goal the other time. And since then, the offense has really been able to get just about nothing going. So first and 10 for Hush in the Harvard offense. A lot of time, all the time in the world, and Hush cannot hook up with Stanton down the sideline. But all that time that Scott Hush has to sit back in the pocket, look around, and make passes like that. Yeah, you had Stanton maxed up, matched up on the free safety, David Akiri at that point, because Hush had all day to play you like to exploit usually against a linebacker when you have the running back coming out of the flat like that on those deep routes but just missing the connection still all day to throw if you give him that he'll make nine out of ten flag is down on this play 
As Reimers, the carry to the 35-yard line, but it looks Flag like down on the play. somebody offside for Georgetown. Offside on the defense, number 99, five-yard penalty, replay, second down. Defensive end Phil Novacki, flag there. So they'll take the penalty, move the ball up to the 38-yard line, and it'll be second down at five for Harvard. Mentioned the Crimson since 2010, 25 and two at home. Since 2001, 60 and 10. <laughs> and <laughs> in night games here at Harvard <laughs> Stadium, 10 and 0. Unbelievable stats, unbelievable. Reimers takes the ball up the middle from Hush. Picks up a first down near midfield all the way to the 49-yard line. A gain of 11 for the freshman Reimers. Reimers from Virginia. The Virginia Gatorade Player of the Year last year. Had over 10,000 yards rushing in his high school career. Play action, Hush. Down the seam, completes the pass to Ferkser. Tackled by Garrett Powers inside the 30-yard line. And again, the Harvard offense is clicking on all cylinders. The defense, or the run offense, setting up the pass. Yeah, that play action definitely got Lockery to bite. That opened up the middle just enough for Hush to float it over to Ferkser and perfect execution from the run to the pass there. First down from the 29. Stanton back in it, running back. Moves it up to the 24-yard line. A gain of five for Stanton. Now has 93 yards on the ground on just 11 attempts. Yeah, he has unreal yards per carry numbers, 6.1 on the career, but over 10 tonight, closing in on 100 yards in the first half. Hush looks to the outside and then tucks it and runs, slides down. He'll be marked at the 21-yard line, three-yard gain. He'll be third and two for the Crimson. Yeah, Hush maybe not aware of where he was. He had made a great decision to tuck that and run once he saw the coverage, but slid down just before that first down marker with really no one around him. Harvard one for four on third down tonight, just outside the red zone here. And Stanton looking to pick up the first down, but stopped at the 20. Might depend on some forward progress, but looks to be a couple of inches shy of that first down marker. Yeah, Satchel and Kislik coming in for the Hoyas to make the stand, and they have forced fourth, fourth down. Good gang tackle there. Fourth and one at Harvard, just keeping it right out there to go for. It's less than a yard to get, about a half yard. Hush hand off to Stanton, has the first down, plenty more, looking for the pylon, and then gets tripped up right around the five-yard line. Jelani Williamson making a touchdown-saving tackle. Paul Stanton looking for his third touchdown of the game there. Yeah, you keep him down once, but not there twice. You see Fabiano really didn't have anyone to block going through that hole, so that's a hole anyone can run through. And then Fisher unable to pick up the block, but still nothing to complain there for the Crimson. Stanton piling it on. First and goal at the five. Well, Santa is doing his best to catch Clifton Dawson with 66 total touchdowns. <laughs> Stanton looking for his third of the day and brought down at the three-yard line. Good tackle made by David Akiri, sophomore defensive back, coming up to make the play. Yeah, that's the type of player I was talking about. We saw him flopping there, and you saw him deliver the boom, knocking Stanton all the way back. He can hit from that middle, and nice instinctive way to come up too and stop that run. Second and goal, ball spotted at the three-yard line. Stanton still in the backfield, tries for it again. Getting some help from his offensive line mate, Anthony Fabiano, who's trying to push him towards the end line. And that'll be third and goal. Well, Scott, I, you know, I think you got to give it to Stanton one more time, huh? He, he's feeling that, he's sniffing that end zone. He got you down here on this drive. He's been denied twice. I think it's time. One more time. Feed him the rock. 112 yards on the ground in this first half for Paul Stanton. 
Third down and goal. Option. Hush will keep it in falling back first to the end zone. Touchdown, Harvard. Scott Hush will run it in from a couple of yards out. And the Crimson now lead it 30 to nothing. Yeah, using Stanton a little bit as a decoy there. Hush, you see his eyes up the whole way, looking to see if the opening is going to come. It does, and he falls just over the plane there with his back to, as you said, ball. Breaks it. No instant replay, of course, in this level. So that is a touchdown, and that will stand. Nice run. So just awaiting Kenny Smart's point after. And now 31-0 Harvard in the final minutes of this first half of play. Another long drive that ends in a touchdown for the Crimson. This time Scott Hush on the run into the end zone. 31-0 Harvard. An attempt to... So a look at the offensive stats completely in the favor of Harvard thus far. And... You can see it on the scoreboard as well. 31-0, Harvard leading Georgetown, which is the minute 39 to play in the second quarter with Chris Frosherini. I'm Scott Sudikoff. Harvard looking to win a 17th consecutive game, which for the time being would tie them with Ohio State for the longest streak, active streak in Division I football. As Kenny Smart kicking off for Harvard. And he'll squib it because Isaac Ellsworth has done a good job returning kicks. And Georgetown will start the possession at the 42-yard line as that is Javion Butler with the return, one of the up men for the Hoyas. And that shows you the respect not only to Ellsworth by kicking away from with the squib, but also your defense. You're putting your defense, giving the opponent the ball at the 42 with a minute 33 left. Full confidence they can keep them from scoring. If you're Georgetown, Scott, I don't know if you try and put a few points on the board since you're down or you try and get out of here uh, only down 31. Well, speaking of that Harvard defense, of course, last year, best in the FCS in points per game defense, top five in overall defense in the country is Nolan rolling to his left, throwing against his body, missing Hill, then a late contact there a bit from Tim Hale, but no flag will go as it was in the midst of the play. And Hill, though, taking an extra hit there. Yeah, you're going to see. It takes a shot right in the back. The throw goes high, so Hill's got to reach up to his tippy toes, and boom, hit comes in on the back. Good to see both players up. Both playing hard to the end of the whistle. Can't fault them. Second and 10 for Georgetown. Nolan will hand it off. And picking up the yardage, Alex Vallis, backup running back for the Hoyas. Getting some time out there right now. Coming up on a minute remaining. Third down play, Nolan running for his life and will throw it away. It just doesn't stop. The Blitzen Crimson, you saw it, you called it, running for his life. Had one blocker back there. He left Alvers to pick up the block, but there's two other guys he needed to block, and nothing he can do, and probably going to punt here. So a quick three and out, just a minute five left, and that's still time for Harvard probably <laughs> to do some damage with two timeouts. Just firing at all cylinders, offense and defense, and even special teams. As we said, seen already one block tonight. McCollum, the punter, a junior from Illinois, angling it towards the sideline. Fisher waving everybody away as it goes out of bounds. Far up the field, we'll see where the linesman will stop. And he will spot the ball at the 24-yard line for Harvard with 57 seconds left. Scott Hush rushing out to the offense here. It's Harvard team, the 10-0 season last season, a 16th Ivy League championship. Tim Murphy in his 22nd year as the Harvard head coach is won eight Ivy League titles, have the th has the third most wins ever in Ivy League play with 105 as Rymers, the handoff. Flag does come in on a play as Rymers gets to the 33-yard line, a nine-yard run, but could be wiped away. 
on the offense. Number 67, 10-yard penalty, replay, it's down. Back up right guard, William Nichols. Called for the hold there. So that wipes away the run from Reimers with 49 seconds remaining in the half. Yeah, Crimson would do it, trying to draw it. You see if you get a few yards, get a couple good chunks, and maybe you're in field goal range. Now being backed up, they might go to a knee and sort of get into the locker room. But 42 seconds with some timeouts, they certainly could score if they wanted to, just a matter of if they need to. It's offensive line for Harvard, so talented. and This is a team that graduated Nick Easton off the offensive line last year, who's now with the San Francisco 49ers. Reimers on the run, short gain, and now the clock could run out if neither team calls a timeout here, as you would expect to happen. So Harvard will head into the locker room here on a Friday night with a 31-0 lead against the visiting Hoyas. Two touchdown runs from Paul Stanton, one from Noah Reimers, and also a touchdown run from the quarterback, Scott Hush. Harvard 31 and Georgetown nothing. Here at halftime, don't go anywhere. More to come on ESPN3 and the Ivy League Digital Network. So just a couple of minutes away from the second half beginning with Chris Bacherini. I'm Scott Sudikoff. Glad you were with us here on ESPN3 and the Ivy League Digital Network. Harvard trying to go to 3-0 and on the season. Georgetown at 2-2. Two and two. Georgetown out of the Patriot League. Coached by Rob Scarlatta, who is in his second season and played football at Georgetown as well, a 1994 graduate. Trying to lead this Georgetown program to some better days. And this is a Georgetown program that only has one winning season since 2001, and that was back in 2011 when they finished 8-3. Last year in the Patriot League, they went 1-5, but did lose three of those games by eight points or less. And, of course, Harvard, the perfect 10-0 season a year ago. And the Ivy League Championship for the 16th time. And now looking for a 17th, of course, here in this 2015 campaign. Yeah, Scott, I mentioned at the top, this team is starting to draw only by the fan base, of course. Coach Murphy and his staff take it game by game, never look ahead, but starting to draw some comparisons to some of those magical teams they had when Ryan Fitzpatrick, the NFL quarterback, was here, especially talked at 2004 where they were blowing everybody out, perfect 10-0 season, got up into – I think they finished around 12th in the national rankings. This Harvard team, if they continue on this path, could be there. It's one thing right now – to be playing well. If they continue this, though, their offense is clicking, their defense is clicking. We already talked about their special teams has a block again tonight. It's really impressive to see all three phases of a football team playing so well. It's not just one phase, it's all three. And when you put them together, the Crimson are having great success. Harvard will receive the football to begin the third quarter with this 31 0 lead next week. Harvard back to Ivy League play, will play at Cornell. Georgetown will open Patriot League play with a matchup at home against the Leopards of Lafayette, a team Harvard will play in two weeks. Kickoff taken at the 15-yard line by Saitu Smith. And a big opening return across midfield, cutting it back inside momentarily and then brought down at the Georgetown 40-yard line, side to Smith. A big return to begin the third quarter, going about 47 yards. Side to Smith puts Harvard in Georgetown territory immediately. Yeah, side to Smith jumps in front of Mr. Andrew Fisher, says, hey, Fish, I can do this stuff too. Takes it along the sideline, nice big return. And, man, what a backbreaker. You're, you're the Hoyas. You've gone into halftime. Oh, we'll regroup. Let's start Let's start out strong on defense and we get the ball back, get back in this. And the senior for the Crimson taking it all the way down to the 38. Harvard in business already early in the second half. Push in the shotgun. Pumps. Now we'll tuck. Spinning at the 40 and down at the 
38. So he gets back to the line of scrimmage, does Hush, who had a rushing touchdown in the second quarter. 8-0 record as a starter. Took over the starting role last year from Connor Hempel, who was injured early in the season, and Hush took the reins and never looked back. Hand off to Reimers. Gain of about two, maybe three, close to the 35-yard line. will bring up third down and seven for Harvard. Reimers going to get a lot of looks here in the second half. Might not have to give back. I don't know if they're going to give that little trophy back for a rookie of the week. They might just leave it here in Cambridge and <laughs> let them get back-to-backs. Third down and long. The screen caught by Fisher. Try to gain the first down with his legs. He does. Picks up more inside the 20. Andrew Fisher, first down Harvard. Fourth catch of the night for Fisher. And you're going to get a look at why this came to about. Look at the top of your screen. You'll see it right there. 48, Ben Broniker with the huge block. Cl clears out the defender. That allows Fisher the open space. He does the rest, but that's all set up by the block of Bronecker. Harvard in the red zone for the 12th time this season. Have nine touchdowns already in those trips. Reimers to the nine-yard line. Now a second and short. And they're just running right off the edge, right off Cole Toner, the senior watch Campbell finalist, and Broniker creating a lot of havoc over there on the edge on that right side, and that allows Reimer to find open space. Hush will throw, and out of the reach of the intended receiver, Justice Shelton Mosley. So it'll be third down and two. Mentioned Cole Toner, not only on the Senior Bowl watch list and the FCS preseason All-American team, but the Campbell tro Trophy semifinalist, which goes to a player that Shows academic and athletic excellence. The right tackle wearing number 78 for the Crimson. Third down. And the first down is gained. Reimers carrying the load to begin the third quarter. The freshman after Paul Stanton ran for 113 yards in the first half. And two touchdowns. Yeah, it's going to be his ball, I'd assume, in the second half. No real reason, barring a comeback from the Hoyas, to get Stanton back out there. And Reimers, he did this against Brown, picked up two TDs in the second half, and will have a chance to add to his already one touchdown to total, maybe even right here. First and goal at the four. Push to throw. And now the drop, the middle dives to the end zone. And he's just shy. Well, Markham just shy of the end zone. Hush, that may have been a designed quarterback draw there, the way it looked. Yeah, we'll see. He goes with the, the fake there to sort of draw the defenders in. No one bites on it. Then he takes off and just not able to get that ball across, but they'll have another shot at it. Still plenty of time, only second down. Reimers in the backfield. Takes the handoff and into the end zone. Second touchdown of the game for Reimers. Fourth in the last two weeks for the freshman. Fifth rushing touchdown of the game for the Crimson. And it's now 37-0. And check out 87 on your screen right there. Jack Stansel, the tight end. He's the one that set up the block. You see the, the high pumps. He knows what he did. He sealed it off, allowed Reimers to get in there. And Reimers not hitting anyone until he's crossed the goal line. That's what you love to see when you are an offensive coach. So Kenny Smart, the point after attempt. The hold by the backup quarterback, Jimmy Meyer, through the uprights, and it's 38-0 Crimson. So Harvard gets the ball to begin the second half, and they drive right down the field and make it 38-0 here at Harvard. Noah Reimer's second touchdown run of the game finishes off an eight-play, 38-yard drive for Harvard to begin the third quarter. And now the Crimson lead the Hoyas 38 to nothing on this Friday evening at Harvard Stadium. Kenny Smart into it with his right foot. 
And Ellsworth will pick it up in the end zone. It'll be a touchback, so the ball will come out to the 25-yard line for Georgetown. First offensive series of the third quarter for Georgetown. Even the kickers are feeling it. Scott Smart hadn't been able to reach the goal line. Any of his previous kicks right there lays down the hammer, gets it deep, and just everything going well for Harvard. And come out of halftime, score quickly. The nice kickoff return. I bet their defense pinned their ears back time, and they're going to try and bring some pressure. Capella in the backfield with Kyle Nolan, the quarterback. And Capella takes the handoff. Check that. Nolan kept it. Fakes me out. <laughs> and gets some yardage up the middle. Does Kyle Nolan on first down for the Hoyas. Nolan in the first half. 11 of 24, 67 yards, was sacked a couple of times. Left the game for about four plays with an injury before returning. Second and six. Nolan to pass. He dumps it off, complete, to Matt Bruckman. Matt Buckman, excuse me, tight end. Yeah. Buckman with his second catch of the night. He plays tight end, but he pass catches more than he blocks. Does a lot of that slot sort of receiving. He'll come out of the backfield just like that. He's got a lot of speed, but going to need a little more yardage to gain if you're the Hoyas. Can't be five, six-yard passes down the field. It's not going to get it done when you're down by this many. Third and one from the 34, Campella. We'll pick up the first down and a couple of yards extra. Mentioned earlier, where's number 35? The Joe Ekabachi Memorial, number 35. Ekabachi, a start, uh, standout for Georgetown football in the mid-90s. and Unfortunately, was in one of the Twin Towers on 9-11. And this Georgetown football program now honors his name and his memory by giving out the number 35 to... A special player on the roster each season as that pass is batted up in the air by Jacob Lindsay coming in on the pressure. It'll be second down. And Ahoya slow to get up. That's Nick James who was back in the lineup today on the offensive line after missing a couple due to injury. Yeah, I hate to see that anytime a player is injured, of course, but especially a person like James who had just fought so hard to get back from injury. He had been injured in that first game for the Hoyas and looks to be in a little bit of distress here. So they will check out James on the field here with 10-15 to play in the third quarter at Harvard all over Georgetown right now, 38 to nothing. although James up now on his feet and able to walk off on his own power. You mentioned that award, though, Scott, it, or that awarding of the number, I should say. It, it's handed down each year. It's very prestigious. It's taken on a life of its own. And all the players are so honored to wear it. Campella actually wasn't really aware as he, when he came to the school at the Hoyas because he wasn't from uh, the area. And he's like, you know, that number, in his words, in his quote, is not very swaggy, he thought initially. But then once he understood the meaning behind it and was given that honor, he said he almost teared up. So it's a great honor and a good player to wear it. Nolan, and in and out of the hands of DeSico. That's about three or four passes that the – Open receivers for Georgetown have dropped. Yeah, just a little bit behind him, but a ball you expect to Seco to make, as you said, sure-handed receiver leading the team in receptions. You'll see off the back foot causes a throw to sail just enough, but getting both hands on it to Seco, not able to rein it in. Third and 10 now from the 38-yard line for the Hoyas. So Jacob Lindsay getting ready defensively for Harvard. And coming over to take the handoff was Vallis. And not much to get there, a couple of yards. And now it's fourth down, and Georgetown will punt. Hoyas were able to get a first down, which was nice. It's something they, you know, probably worked on, obviously, in the locker room to come out, get a couple positive plays. Just stalling out here. They've really stalled out between the 240 yard lines, unable to get much deeper. Different punter out there. It's Ben Pretty, who acts as the kickoff specialist. We'll be punting here for Georgetown after Harry McCollum had some struggles in the first half, and that punt goes out of bounds around the 25-yard line. 
Side judge will come up and mark it at the 23 yard line where Harville will begin this possession. Good angled punt though, Sky. You, you have a player like Fisher. We talked about how good he is and we've seen how good he is tonight. Kick it away from him, leave no doubt. Um, let, do not let him catch the ball. The key there is kicking it out of bounds as close as you can get it. If it sails out of bounds in the air, they can walk up the line and mark it out of bounds even further. But that was a nice kick. So Harvard will have the ball for the second time here in the third quarter. Already have a touchdown on the board and now leading 38-0. Reimers still in the backfield with Hush. Hush will pass, completes it to Jack Stansell. And a first down on the first down play. Stansell caught a touchdown last game, but I also like that. If you remember going back to the touchdown, he had that big block to spring Reimers in and then the kind of coaching staff rewards him with a play coming his way right after that. Like to see that. Stansel, 25-yard touchdown last week against Brown, sophomore from Alabama. Reimers looking for the space on the outside of Hurdles, a tackler, and then brought down shy of the first down, but the athletic move by Noah Reimers to pick up at least two or three more yards. Get a great look at it here. Yeah, I might want to clip this one off and send it into the Sports Center top 10. Wilkin Williamson coming in. Whoop! There he goes directly over. You get the oohs and ahs. People watching on the video board at home. Great camera work. Nice replay. Terrific hurdle there by Reimers. Second down and a couple for Harvard. Hush. Had a man wide open in the flat. Instead goes over the middle looking for Foster. Looked like he had Reimers open in the flat, but instead tried to go for Foster. It'll be third down and short now for the Crimson. Yeah, not a bad decision to make a longer pass over the middle when you have a second and short because now you're left with a manageable third down. Blitz shown, it comes. Reimers will have a first down and then pushed back, but his forward progress gets the first down by one yard. At the 47 yard line, gain of four for the freshman Reimers. He's having a good day himself. Mentioned the numbers for Stanton up over 110 yards on the ground and Reimers is at 55. So he's averaging almost five yards per carry, and Paul Stanton averaging seven and a half yards. Hush, rolling out, and completes the pass. First down. That one going to David Trompke, his first catch of the night. Yeah, Scott, he's a senior. You could hear the Harvard uh, sideline erupting. You like to see the senior get a look like that. Time for a lot of new numbers checking in. A couple of 83s on the roster, but that was Trompke, the senior. And he runs a nice route, comes back to the ball, and gets both feet in bounds. First down at the Georgetown 40. Hush locks it over the head of the intended receiver this time, looking for John Van Allen the third. Hush demonstrating his arm strength, though. He's throwing across the field. When you're going from one hash mark to the other, that's the toughest throw to make at this level. And has still had a lot of steam on it, too much, in fact. But he's got a nice, he has great arm strength, and that will play well as the season goes on. Handoff on second and 10 goes to Jason Holdaway. You'll see this tackle here too. It's one in the NFL they're trying to get away from when you clearly have the runner and they're not going anywhere. I don't know if we'll be able to catch the end of it, but you'll see the nice whip and throw down there. Kind of a dangerous play and usually NFL is trying to go away from it. Hopefully at this level they will too. Third down and four for Harvard at the 34 yard line of Georgetown. Hush screen to the near side, complete the Shelton Mosley towards the outside, spins to the first down. And then wrangled out. 
But a first down to the 28-yard line. Have to be careful there along the sideline. A couple of Georgetown players going into enemy territory. Yeah, this is a wide receiver. They're very high on highly recruited freshman. Does really great things. You see him beat the spot there and get the first down at the end. Anytime there's three Georgetown players that deep into the Harvard sideline, especially in a game like this where the score is a little bit out of hand, you got to watch. But good job, referees, coming in to break that one up. Shelton Mosley had a 37-yard touchdown catch from Jimmy Meyer against Rhode Island a couple of weeks ago. Hush in the flat to Reimers. Stutter steps, first down, lowers the shoulder. A flag comes in. Williamson made the tackle. This time Williamson does not get hurdled by Reimers. See what the flag is here. I believe they're going to get a hold against the Crimson. Unfortunately, pretty play will pick up after the official call. Holding on the offense, number 12, 10-yard penalty, replay, first down. So that's junior wideout Joseph Foster called for the holding penalty. He'll wipe away the gain from Reimers, the first down from Reimers. So I've been watching film on Hush. He throws the prettiest out ball to the running backs that I see, sort of even when I watch football on Sundays. In stride, hitting Reimer, it's perfect. You see the hold there against Foster. Didn't have anything to do with the play. It happened once he was down the field, so unfortunate for the Crimson. But Hush throws such a nice ball out of the backfield. That's a lot harder to throw than it looks. If you hit the receiver out of stride just a little bit, it slows all his momentum down. He doesn't pick up quite a big gain. Reimers on the handoff. Gets towards the first down marker to the 18-yard line. It'll be a yard shy. Reimers, already a touchdown today, two last week. Should say two here today. So four now in his freshman season. Five running touchdowns for Harvard tonight. Reimers again. And he's brought down after a short gain. Tackled by Garrett Powers. Yeah, nice job by Powers coming up to make that hit, but Reimers had enough to get that first down. And their ground attack for the Crimson just chewing up the Hoyas right now. Heating up the clock with a 38 point lead are the Crimson. Hush will hand it off to Holdway to the 14-yard line. Gain of three for Jason Holdway. They did a story with left tackle Fabiano talking about some superlatives for his teammates. Holdway Scott voted the most dramatic Ooh. by Mr. Fabiano. So Is that in terms of being a good actor or <laughs> a little too overdramatic? I think, yeah, a little too overdramatic. He said he always likes to have a camera. He's always doing crazy stunts. So see if he does anything in the field. But off the field, certainly a character. Hush's pass completes. That's Elgin Davis. Listed as defensive back, makes the catch. <laughs> Well, if you can cover passes, you can catch passes, right? Nice route again, breaking off on the slant route. Hush hits him in stride. So Hush, changing out receivers, <laughs> hasn't really missed a beat. Third down and one at the eight-yard line. Harvard won its 850th game as a program last week against Brown, the 10th school in Division I history to reach that plateau. Holdway up the middle looking for the end zone. Brought down a half yard shy. <laughs> Too bad. Would have been good to see what kind of celebration Mr. Drama could put together. Of course, with a big score, you wouldn't expect too much anyway. But a nice run again. The Harvard offensive line, you see them switch out running backs. Reimers, Holdway, Stanton. Doesn't really matter. Those holes are so big, you and I can run through them. Maybe not as maybe, fast, maybe you Maybe you <laughs> can. I don't know if I can. First and goal right at the one-yard line. Hold away, looking again for the end zone and maybe loses a bit of yardage. That time the Hoya run blitz disrupted. Was able to get through and break through that crimson line one of the few times tonight. Did 
Georgetown, excuse me, Harvard's been in the red zone. Keep mentioning this number 13 times on the season, and they've punched it in for a touchdown 11 times. Unreal numbers. Looking for another one. Holdway. And just shy again. So <laughs> Holdway has been denied on three consecutive attempts at the end zone here. Got to wonder if they'll give him a fourth try. And Noah Reimers is coming in to replace Holdway at the running back position here. So it might be Noah Reimers looking for a third score. Yeah, three good looks for Mr. Holdway. Gave it his best shot and now giving it to the more seasoned player as a freshman. Funny to be saying that, but two touchdowns already tonight looking for number three. One, re one receiver split out there is Shelton Mosley, but it'll be Reimers, lowers the shoulders, reaches in, and scores. Third touchdown run for Noah Reimers. And he becomes the first Harvard running back with three touchdowns in a game since Paul Stanton Jr. <laughs> did it last year in a game against Penn. 44 nothing. Good leg churn there. That's all on Reimers. He got hit in the backfield, took it, able to keep the legs going and get just across that goal line, picking up touchdown number three, Scott. It's funny. Stanton, his teammate on the bench, last to have three. So those he guys could have had. Right, he could have had three. Now yeah. He has two. <laughs> They'll be going back and forth all season. We saw it last year with Andrew Kasten, who took over the main running duties from Paul Stanton. 45 nothing Harvard as they've scored on the first two drives of this third quarter. It's all crimson at Harvard Stadium. Forty-five nothing Harvard leading here at home, and you see since 2010, 25 and two are the Crimson at home. And if you stretch that out all the way back to 2001, 60 and 10. And if you want to get even more specific, this is the 11th night game at Harvard Stadium ever, and Harvard is well on its way to being 11 and 0 in those games. As Isaac Ellsworth will bring it up to the 30-yard line. He's had a good day in the kick return game for Georgetown today. 17 play, 77 yard, six minute and 56 second drive for the touchdown for Harvard. And Scott, to your point about the dominance at home and start, since they started playing these night games, such a fun atmosphere. Did a little study, Ticket City, last summer and Harvard came up as the most popular football team in mass, out distancing the other schools. Did a poll of social media, how many hits, who's talking about the Crimson, and they came out on top, and partly because they keep winning at home, it just kind of gets in the lexicon of everybody that this is a winning program, and it's just been great to see the Crimson have such success. Pass completed to Harry Glore on first down. Noah Reimers, his third touchdown run. Just a couple of moments ago of the game for Harvard to push this lead to 45 nothing. Georgetown now looking just for something positive to finish this game with before they open up Patriot League play next week against Lafayette. Nolan completes another one. And a first down and a bit more for Matt Buckman. Junior from New Jersey with the reception. Third catch for Buckman today. He had seven against Dartmouth a couple of weeks ago. Of course, Dartmouth will be here on a Friday night as well under the lights against Harvard. It'll be on October the 30th, the day before Halloween. Nolan will hand the ball off to Vallis across midfield into Harvard territory to the 48-yard line. Picks up six yards on the first down run. Yeah, they're just looking to get some positive plays right before this third quarter ends. But this is where they've been stalling all game long, Scott. Get to that 50-yard line. And fortunately for Hoyas, not much further past. They've started here a fair amount of time, either by kickoff return or driving down, but unable to really penetrate that Crimson defense. Vallis again on the carry. And first contact made by Miles McCollum. A gain of one. 
Bring up third down and three. Just 15 seconds left in the third quarter, so not sure if Georgetown will elect to run a play before this quarter ends. It does not look like they will as they're looking towards the sideline at the moment. So the final five seconds of the third quarter will come off the clock. A third quarter dominated by Harvard yet again as they outscore Georgetown 14 to nothing to push the halftime lead from 31 nothing to 45 nothing here. We'll be back with the fourth quarter in just a few moments here on ESPN3. Harvard has not committed a turnover yet here today. 28-0 under Tim Murphy since 2000. Tim Murphy looking for his 150th win as the head coach at Harvard. And on a third down and three, Georgetown will pick up the first down on the quick hitter. So into Harvard territory, Georgetown is as we begin the fourth quarter, trailing 45 to nothing. A yeah, nice wheel route by Del Seco to pick it up. Everybody's still working hard, and Georgetown maybe trying to pick up the tempo just a little bit. Been going no huddle all night, but even a little more pep in their step now. Harvard, by the way, just one turnover in the season so far, one interception thrown. Vallis muscles his way to the 32-yard line to pick up six to make it second and four for Georgetown. And once again, Vallis, a hole to the 25, and another Georgetown first down. Well, if you're wondering at home, wow, seems Hoyers are moving the ball pretty well. There have been a few substitutions on the Crimson side, part of that linebacking core on the bench and defensive line being changed in and out, getting some minutes for the younger staff. Harvard, of course, has a huge roster. Yeah, we saw on the offensive end three or four different players being worked in. Offensively. Dressed so many that they have to use duplicate numbers. So an announcer's dream, huh, Scott? Oh, that's perfect. <laughs> First and ten at the 25-yard line. And again, the handoff goes nowhere. Vallis brought down to the backfield. Couldn't get back to the line of scrimmage. After three quarters, Harvard outgaining Georgetown 432 to 161. In last year's meeting between these two teams, it was a very similar story. Harvard outgained the Hoyas 558 to 227 in a 34-3 win down in DC. It's just the second all-time meeting between the Crimson and the Hoyas. Georgetown only joining the Division One ranks in 1993 as that pass is tipped. It falls harmlessly down. Luke Hutton got a hand on it. Well, Georgetown has a long history of football that involved the program being disbanded and then coming back as a club team and then see that play, Hutton getting a hand on it. In 1969, the team was reintroduced as a varsity program, played Division Three until 1993, joined the Metro Atlantic Athletic Conference until 2001 when Georgetown joined the Patriot League. Third down, Nolan fires it and in and out of the hands of Justin Hill, although it looked like off the chest of Hill as he turned. And that ball right there, almost like a button hook along the sideline. Yeah, trying to throw back shoulder was Nolan. He obviously delivered it to the inside. That's why it hit the cornerback on the back of the head, but a nice route run by Hill. It's unfortunately delivery a little bit off. You saw in that replay too, a couple plays ago with Hutton, 35, watching the quarterback's eyes. That's something you really can't teach. It's sort of instinctual. Georgetown's going to have to call a timeout here. Unsure whether to kick or go for it there, Scott. Well, they had Darmstadter out there to attempt a field goal, but Georgetown will call a timeout. 12.45 remaining in the fourth quarter. Harvard 45, Georgetown nothing. Well, that number will be updated in about 12 minutes and 45 seconds. Harvard will be 11-0 all-time in night games here at Harvard Stadium, leading 45 to nothing. 
42-yard field goal attempt here for Henry Darmstadter, who missed a field goal earlier tonight. And a bad snap and hold. And that will be brought down 10 yards shy of a possible first down. Harry McCollum, the holder, had trouble with it. And yeah, the ball turned over to Harvard. I'm not sure they would have got the kick off. You see off the edge anyway. Just Harvard right in there. Hands. Yeah, unfortunately cold night. McCollum's had a tough night, but Harvard a little excited to come off. People may think 45-0, you know, what's the big deal? Keeping that shutout alive. You know, defenses live for shutouts, and Harvard dodging another scoring chance there. Harvard has had a shutout each of the last three seasons, all three times against Columbia. So looking for a shutout of someone other than Columbia here tonight. Jimmy Meyer in at quarterback for Harvard and completes his first pass to Jack Stansell. Meyer, a senior from Roswell, Georgia, is now seven for eight already on the season and had a touchdown on his first career pass at Rhode Island. That was that 37-yarder to Justice Shelton Mosley. So the senior will see extended time here tonight. Hand off to Holdaway. Sprints through a hole up the middle. First down to the 42-yard line. Keeping those legs churning, getting those extra yards. You mentioned Meyer. Not sure how much we'll see him throw tonight. Has a really good arm. Delivers a steady ball. Saw him throw a lot against Brown. Very impressed with how he moves. El Presidente, his nickname. People, teammates think he's most likely to get into politics after the season. Holdway trying to stiff arm away a tackler, Matt Satchel, but Satchel brings him down. Satchel, one of the senior defensive leaders for Georgetown. Considered to be a first team all Patriot League preseason performer from by Phil Steele, the professional prognosticator of college football. Yeah, Mr. Steele knows his football, and so does Mr. Satchel there. You see why? Good ball pursuit, nice steady tackle in the open field. Meyer in the shotgun. We'll pass it here. And the pass is complete, but a short gainer. Stansell, another catch. Well, Meyer's not going to win many votes if he keeps throwing balls like this for his poor receiver, Stansell. You can see it from the outside. You're going to get it late coming in right to make the tackle. It was a good route run, but Stan uh, Meyer looked at his receiver in the whole time, so Williamson almost able to jump that one. Jelani Williamson there on the coverage, as Chris pointed out. Third down and call it four for Harvard. Meyer straight back. Fires a good ball in there. Caught for the first down to the 35-yard line. That goes complete to number 27, Dan Milo. So Harvard is emptying out the sideline here and everybody getting involved. But watch that footwork into a tight window. He steps up and delivers. That's the key to anyone watching at home. Stepping into your throws, able to fire into that tight window. And again, showing off his arm strength. He's thrown 10 passes in his career and has completed nine of them. Holdway to the 30 yard line. Will gain five yards on the ground. And it's funny, it, it, we only see him for a limited time, you know, usually at the end of games or in blowouts, but his footwork is so consistent. That allows him to deliver the, the ball so accurately and give him those sort of unworldly completion numbers. Granted, he probably can't keep it up the rest of his career, but you can see why it's there. Holdway takes a big hit at the legs and pops right back up. Yeah, it's kind of a gruesome hit. It's nice to see all the way pop up, coming in low and strong. Luckily up in the hip area, so no one's going to get hurt. Nice form tackle all the way up to the task. Back up strong safety, Jethro Francois with the tackle for the Hoyas. It's a first down, though. And Harvard continuing to run up the gut. Holdway getting a lot of action now as the Third string running back behind Stanton and Reimers, who did their job today. Stanton, 15 carries, 113 yards, two touchdowns. Reimers, 15 carries, 64 yards, three touchdowns. 
We got even more now, Scott. I don't know where we're on the depth chart, but 3-1 checking in in the pistol formation now. I believe that is Van Johnson. <laughs> it is. As Meyer able to scurry around and then still complete the pass. This time it's Brian Dunlap. Or do they call it incomplete? Nearside judge had it as a catch, but you he was kind of screened off. And a flag on the field. The receiver downfield on the offense, number 76. Five yard penalty. Second down. Well, that would have been the ninth different receiver to catch a pass in this game. And the only reason you see Myers is going to scramble, and that's what happens sometimes. The linemen get out of sorts. They're not allowed to get down the field until the quarterbacks released it, but they really can't tell when you're blocking at the point of attack, so unfortunate. But, yeah, look at that arm strength from Myers all the way across the field, Scott, with, on a line. So it'll be second and ten for the Crimson. Let's play restarts here. Georgetown has declined the penalty. Hmm. Third down. So decline the penalty. They called the pass incomplete. Decline the penalty, so it'll be third and five, it looks like. And the handoff does go to the aforementioned number 31, Van Johnson. Nice run by Johnson again, going with his blocks. You see right there, Harvard pulling to the left. Nice seal, cuts it back up in and gets close to that first down. And Harvard will just go for it here on fourth and looks like one yard to gain for a first down. Give Georgetown the opportunity to stop Harvard from scoring instead of taking the field goal. And Johnson was hit in the backfield. And it looks like the spot is going to be short. It will be, so it'll be a turnover on downs, and Georgetown will take it over with 7.57 remaining. Timeout on the field here at Harvard Stadium. Harvard 45, Georgetown nothing in this fourth quarter. In his 22nd season, Tim Murphy is 7 minutes and 57 seconds away from his 150th win as the Harvard head coach and it would be his 182nd as a head coach overall as that pass incomplete on first down for Georgetown but Chris there's something that you pointed out to me during the break that's even really more impressive about Tim Murphy's 22 years here at Harvard. Yeah just to give you an idea every player that he's recruited that stayed four years not only has graduated but won at least a share of the Ivy League title. Every player he has recruited in his tenure at Harvard. That's a short gain on second down. Murphy has won eight Ivy League championships as the Harvard head coach. Of course, the last two seasons, 2011 as well, 2007 and 2008, 2004, 2001, and the 1997 was his first Ivy League championship. Third down and nine for Georgetown. Isaac Ellsworth, the running back. And the quarterback is Tim Barnes, who saw some time in the first half. Looked pretty good. Hands it off to Ellsworth, looking for the outside. And stuffed up at the 19-yard line. It'll be fourth down for the Hoyas, and they will come out and punt, it looks like. I would, I would hope so. I don't think uh, going for it here makes any sense with the score and giving Harvard such a short field. Harvard led 31-0 at halftime. It was 10-0 after the first quarter, and the second quarter was the difference with the 21 points put on the board from the Crimson. Looking for a shutout. It will be the fourth shutout in as many years for Harvard. One each the last three seasons, all coming against Columbia. It's just amazing that one team has not scored a point against Harvard in three consecutive games. This punt will take a Georgetown bounce inside the 40-yard line and be down at the 37-and-a-half-yard line with 6.20 to play. Scott, I thought about, you know, getting our research team as this game was getting out of hand. What's the biggest deficit, most points scored, things like that? And 
kind of perplexed. Harvard won a game in 1886 <laughs> by the score of 158 to zero. So I don't think we're in danger of hitting that they deficit. They may have had different scoring <laughs> rules back then. Point the touchdowns may have been more it may have something. Yeah, yeah. A lot. I don't know. You know. No, in the modern area, 69 is the highest point total for the Crimson. They did that against Coast Guard and Tufts. Holdway, the ball carrier to the 43-yard line. Gains five for Harvard as the clock continues to run here for the Crimson. Holdway still working hard. Offensive line still working hard. Taking on defenders. Well, it's his chance to shine. Yeah. Coming in as the third string running back. We know he likes the camera on him, so he's going to get a lot of face time here. Harvard again back to the Ivy League next week. They'll play out in Ithaca against Cornell. There'll be a noon kickoff on s next Saturday. Back to pass is Meyer. Down the seam, completed. No, it's dropped. <laughs> oh. Thought that Elgin Davis had reeled that one in and just lost control of it. Yeah, for a moment he did. Just a simple go route. Myers drops back. We talked about how pretty his pass is. Puts it right where it needs to be. But looking over your shoulder, that's certainly a tough catch. He gets a high five from his quarterback on the way out to the sideline. Good effort there. Third down and five. One non-Ivy League game left on the Harvard schedule. Two weeks from tomorrow, the play at Lafayette. And again, Lafayette's the next opponent for Georgetown in Patriot League play. Is that'll be short of a first down. And they asked Coach Murphy this week on the radio, Scott, how, how do you handle your team when you get such big leads during a game? You know, what do, what do you do to keep their focus on them? You know, they were joking with him that everyone else in the stadium starts looking at other things, you know, maybe not paying attention as much. But he tells his players, you know, to work just as hard for the first group as for the second group. And it's really a game-by-game -game thing. You know, you can't ever get ahead or start looking ahead or looking somewhere else. You never know what's going to happen. So Coach Murphy, he's been in position to be on the right end of a lot of blowouts. So he's had some practice, but he keeps his team's focus. And that's why you kind of see them going to the deep balls and still working really hard out there, doing the same things on offense and defense. Fair catch by DeSico at the 16-yard line. And with 4.38 left to go, it's Harvard 45, Georgetown nothing. Now you see the dominance of Harvard. The time of possession really stands out. I mean, the yards <laughs> do as well, but the time of possession for Harvard, and that's been the running game. Just as many yards on the ground as in the air as first down pass. Complete for the Hoyas to Jimmy McLaughlin from Tim Barnes. McLaughlin, a sophomore wideout, his first catch of the season. Yeah, Hoya's gonna, Hoya fans gonna look at the future right here. You have Barnes in there, Ellsworth in there. They're gonna be returning next year where Nolan and Kimpella will be graduating. So, good chance for those guys to give a glimpse of the future against this good Crimson team. Troy Bullock also in the backfield. For Georgetown on the second down play. Ellsworth takes the handoff. Moves it out to almost the 28-yard line. Call it the 27. Gain of three, so it will be a third down and one for Georgetown late in this fourth quarter. Trying to maybe get on the board here before this one is over. Yeah, Bullock's a nice story, Scott. He was the winner of the weekly belt award. They give that belt to a player each year. Since 2011, Dan Linehan for the Hoyas had a speech after a similar blowout loss like this back in 2011. It was so inspiring. The team went on a huge run, and now they name a belt in his honor each week and give it to the player who works the hardest. Ellsworth turns the corner and had one tackle to beat to go a little bit further down the field, but... Gets brought down. He does pick up the first down. The tackle being made by Chris Keegan. Yeah, Chris Keegan's going to come into your picture right there and just get the tippy toes of Ellsworth. Ellsworth would have been gone, as you said. A lot of speed out there for him, especially on this turf. He can motor. Well, we've seen him do very well in the kick return game, averaging 27 yards per return on four returns here tonight, including one of 34 yards. So that's a positive for Georgetown to take out of this game and if 
you know, the Harvard coaching staff, you might take that as a negative to <laughs> work on during the week. Yeah, I don't think with this Crimson team you got to worry about overconfidence, Scott, but that's something. Coach of uh, the New England Patriots right down the road always harps on that, that there's always something to work on, even wins and losses, even if they're blowouts either way. So certainly their special teams, at least on the kickoff side, has a little bit to be worked on. Second down and eight here. Barnes down the sideline, and it's almost intercepted by Wesley Augsbury. Back up defensive back for the Crimson. Yeah, Augsbury out of Denver and unable to hang on to that one. It's a nice play design. They had trips left. Left the one-on-one -on -one coverage with Augsbury on the outside. And unfortunately, Barnes unable to get enough height on that. Augsbury almost able to pick it off, but he did have the man open. Third down now for Georgetown in the final two minutes of this one. Play clock expired, but Georgetown calling a timeout. To time out. save the play here. Gives us a chance to look towards the future for this Harvard team again playing at Cornell next weekend before they will go on the road out of league at Lafayette. So they won't be back here at Harvard Stadium until October the 24th. We'll take on Princeton. And Princeton in action tonight hosting Columbia in an Ivy League matchup. Early season, first Ivy League game for both of those teams tonight. The one thing I do like about the schedule, Scott, is Princeton and Dartmouth Penn all at home. Princeton and Dartmouth figured to be the most formidable opponents for the Crimson outside of, of course, Yale. But you mentioned Penn had that big win, too, against Villanova. So three tough games, but three games at home. Princeton has a 10-5 lead on Columbia in the fourth quarter, 10-5. You don't see that often, and you don't see this type of tackling that often late in a blowout, too. It's just an example. These are players that maybe don't play as much, but they still buy into the Harvard mentality. Look at this gang tackle that's come up. You get one guy holding him up, and then here comes one, two, three, four, five Crimson defenders, six, seven. That's only 11 on the field, folks. Jacob Schweitzer taking the brunt of all those hits there, able to hold on to the ball. Yeah, that's the type of mentality Coach Murphy preaches and his staff preaches, and it's worked on from the starters all the way down to the reserves. So again, about four minutes to go in that game at Princeton. It's 10-5. to five. Princeton leads. Only a grand slam away from being down a run, huh? Princeton does have the ball, but on their own four-yard line in that <laughs> game. Not a lot of offense, apparently. I have to assume the weather down there is not too pleasant either. Punt here on fourth down from Georgetown. We'll skip out of bounds at the 26-yard line, and Harvard just 65 seconds left. We'll probably run the clock out here, might kneel on it. Georgetown does have two timeouts left, but would not expect them to use them down 45 nothing. And sure. You mentioned on that, or you heard on that punt, our microphone's picking up. A lot of hollering. You may wonder what that is when a punt like that is so short. You're hollering at get your, out. Get your out gunners. Yeah, yes. get out of the way because it could bounce anywhere. You'll see it a lot of times hitting a guy unbeknownst and turning into a turnover. I'm very interested to get back home and check the DVR of this Princeton-Columbia game because 10-5, to 5, there's got to be something going on there weather-wise that's <laughs> causing that type of game. And you can also go home and rewatch this game. Oh, of course. On the Ivy League Digital Network, which is pretty cool. Uh, either the Ivy League Digital Network or watch ESPN.com, ESPN3.com, as Harvard will kneel on it. And doing the honors, getting the timeout to do the kneel, is Tom Stewart, third string quarterback for the Crimson. And so Harvard will win a third straight game to begin the season. A 17th consecutive game overall. 
Head coach Tim Murphy, his 150th win as the Harvard head coach. See it there on your screen. It's now official or will be in seven seconds. And Harvard, a very convincing 45 nothing win over Georgetown. And that's how the season has started. 41-10 over Rhode Island, 53-27 against Brown. And then 45 nothing here tonight for the Crimson as they continue to roll. Yeah, watch out, Ivy League. That's really all I can say. Harvard is unleashed this season. You say that train going down the tracks, offense, defense, Special teams all in line. Going to be a special season here at the stadium. Noah Reimers, three touchdowns on the ground. Harvard with six touchdowns on the ground in general as Harvard coasting to this 45-0 victory over the Hoyas. So that'll just about wrap things up here from Harvard Stadium. From our broadcast partner, Chris Boscherini, I'm Scott Sudikoff saying so long from Cambridge. Again, where Harvard beats Georgetown 45 to nothing. To watch this entire game on replay, as well as other games and on-demand content, visit IvyLeagueDigitalNetwork.com on your desktop or mobile device, or visit WatchESPN.com and the Watch ESPN app. This has been a presentation of the Ivy League Digital Network and ESPN. <laughs>